and entitled Karen tries to blame me for her car breaking down, demanding that I leave my job to go pick up her car, bring it back to our gas station, and fix all of her problems. But after a while, I simply couldn't take her comments any longer. So I blew up on this entitled Karen and told her to get lost, resulting in her trying to get me fired. Here's what happened. Okay, so this goes back to 2003. I'm working a minimum wage job at a very busy gas station in the United Kingdom. I had only been there a few months, but at that point, I knew the ropes of that place. And it was also very busy. Lines of cars and trucks going down the highway and a line of customers going out the door. And I'm working alone as usual. So the cast of the story includes me, an overworked 17-year-old with a bright future of PTSD and other mental health goodness. Our next person is the entitled Karen, who's just some lady who's missing her butler, but still acts incredibly rude. Anyways, this Karen got out of a taxi and came up to the front of the line, past about 20 customers patiently waiting. This entitled Karen had to be about 70 years old, and she's dressed head to toe in black velvet, as well as a fur coat, and is wearing more platinum jewelry than I've ever seen before. She also seemed vaguely familiar, and I didn't put it together until the end. She demands in a very snobby voice that she needs fuel. Imagine Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter, but much fatter. I say to her, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to wait your turn. And this is literally said in front of all the customers she jumped in line in front of. This entitled Karen responds to me by saying, I need fuel in my car collected from down the road. Me and a few customers give her a weird look. I look to her and I say, if you've broken down, I have the number for a recovery service and you are more than welcome to use our phone to get that taken care of. I then hand her a card with a number on it as well as direct her towards the phone in between customers. She just looked at the card and the phone as if I put a dead rat on the counter. She looks at me and says, well, why can't you do it? I respond by saying, well, I'm sorry, but I can't. It's very busy today. And this is all while other customers are coming along getting their stuff done. She then looks at me and says, no, why can't you go retrieve my car? And at this point, I'm gobsmacked. I say to her, ma'am, we are a petrol station. We don't do recovery services. But this Karen doesn't take no for an answer. She actually looks at me and says, this is nonsense. You will collect my car this instant. Now, at this point, I'm getting very annoyed. And the customers in the store are also getting annoyed. She lets her car run out of fuel, leaves it on a gridlocked highway, gets a taxi to my station, and somehow it's my fault and my responsibility to try and rectify the situation? What is going on? I respond to this entitled Karen and I say, how am I supposed to do that? I can't close the station. I'm here on my own. I don't own a car or even have a license. I will happily call a recovery company for you and I can do this when I have a free moment away from the customers. Just please be aware that they will charge a fee and they need payment in cash. There is an ATM outside that you can use. This entitled Karen is now red in the face with anger. She says to me, are you stupid? Why should I pay? My car has run out of fuel. You have to deal with it. At this point, I'm trying to keep cool. I'm trying to serve customers and I'm trying to find an alternative to get her out of the store at this point. I say to her, in that case, there are fuel cans behind you that you can happily purchase and fill up. The entitled Karen agrees and goes to pick up a one gallon can and actually slams it on the counter. She says to me, go fill it up now. I just quickly say sorry to the next customer and I scan the can to try and get her out the door. I say to her, that'll be roughly nine pounds altogether. The entitled Karen says, I'm not paying for that. It is your responsibility to provide fuel and your customer service is atrocious. I refuse to pay. You will be paying for my fuel, my recovery, and my taxi. I eventually told this entitled Karen that she can then just leave. At this point, the entire line of customers started chewing her out as well, telling her to get out and that we're too busy to deal with this stupid old cow, as they put it. The entitled Karen said, You'll be hearing from me about this, and I will be having your job for this insolence. And after that, she got back into her taxi and drove off. We did hear back from her about a week later. She had gone to customer complaints, reached the regional manager, and the national HR. She claimed that I was responsible for her car running out of fuel, as well as being abandoned on the highway, including refusing to pay for towing and refueling, as well as humiliating her in front of the other customers. She was also demanding reimbursement and compensation for the poor quality of service. She also demanded a written apology from me, as well as a letter of my resignation. A week after this, my manager pulls me aside. She knew all about it. She heard the story from me and a few of our regular customers as well, and she watched and heard it all on our security cameras. The entitled Karen sounded crazy and looked like she had just come from a funeral. 
She chalked it up as being emotionally drained, senile, and mentally ill, and said that I shouldn't have to worry about it. My manager even said that she had seen worse in her life. Then, she got the letters and phone calls from the head office, and that threw her theory out of the window. She handed me a copy of the response letter that was sent to the Karen, stating that she was barred from all of our company stations nationwide, and she was informed by the company that we are not a charity, and entering one of our stations or approaching our staff will result in the removal by the police. And it was right about then that I realized who it was that I was talking to. I read the name of this entitled Karen, and I realized she was one of my old principals from primary school, and she was an absolute jerk even when I was five years old, and it looks like she got a lot worse as she got older. That lady was seriously out of line. Who shows up with their car abandoned on the side of the road, jumps in front of everybody in line, and then says, you, lowly cash worker, you're gonna fill up my car and fix everything. Like, lady, you seriously need help. She actually tried to get you fired and tried to claim that you're the reason that all of this went wrong. People like that drive me crazy. They point to everybody else around them instead of accepting responsibility for some kind of mess up that they caused. There is literally no way that your car getting abandoned on the side of the road is some cashier's fault. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that didn't put gas in your car, you idiot. Like, what are you doing? The original poster was also not out of line. They handled it really well, considering the line that they were dealing with. They had 20 customers ahead of them. They were the only ones in the store, and this weird Karen walks up and just butts in line. And it was also really cool to see the other customers basically have this person's back. They all basically collectively decided, no, screw this lady, she needs to go. And the fact that this was an old principal that you dealt with in primary school is like the icing on top of the cake. She was a nightmare then, and she was a nightmare now. And hopefully this experience of getting banned from all of their stores nationwide taught this entitled Karen a valuable lesson. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. A mutual friend of mine demands that I give over my dog for her kids, claiming that they got attached to my dog while I babysat them, and that I'm skilled enough where I could just train a new dog and give them mine. And I've honestly never been more annoyed or offended by somebody's request ever in my life. Here's what happened. Well, I think it's fairly safe to assume I've lost a couple of friends over this, but what happened was not on me. This weekend, a friend of mine asked me to keep an eye on her two kids while she and her husband went away for the weekend for some private couple time. Her mother was initially going to watch the kids, but fell through on short notice. She called me at 3 p.m. on Friday to come over in three hours, and my friend knew I probably wasn't doing anything anyways, which was both hurtful and incredibly accurate. So I said, sure, I'll help you out. She's got two kids, a girl who is eight and a boy who is five. They're good kids for the most part. The boy has a little bit of a snitching problem and the girl has a sharing problem, but it's just two days. So I show up Friday after work while my friend gives me the rundown and her husband tells the kids that they will be punished if they were bad. But the kids were very unimpressed. The parents leave and it's just me and the kids in the house and it is immediate pandemonium. The brother snitches on his sister for taking an extra cookie. The sister cries to me that her brother touched her Nintendo Switch and I make the executive decision that they've got too much energy and if they are tuckered out, they'll hopefully just chill out. So I ask the kids to track down bathing suits because we're going to my gym, which has a pool and a guest policy. I did let the mom know what we were up to before we left and I asked if it was okay if I brought my dogs over as well. He's house trained and he is a good dog and she said that's fine. And you know what? Operation Pool was an absolute success. Once everyone was appropriately tired, including me, we made a pit stop on the way back to their house to grab my dog. He is extremely well behaved and he loves kids. And both kids were immediately all about my dog by the name of Dexter. And Dexter was all about the kids. So I did set up some ground rules for the dog. I said there's no pulling on his fur and he goes wherever he wants. The kids kind of struggle with the notion that the dog is not a toy and I obviously kept him out of places where he wasn't supposed to go. Miraculously, after the swim and chasing the dog around the house, it left them incredibly tired and they both fell asleep watching a Disney film on the television. After the movie, I woke the kids up, I walked them off to their bed, and I didn't really make them brush their teeth. And for the record, the son, who is a massive snitch, did decide to throw me under the bus the next morning when his mom called that no, they did not brush their teeth the night before. I told the kids that if they left their doors open, Dexter might sneak in and give them cuddles. I increased the likelihood of this by sleeping on the couch and not leaving him a spot. He expressed his displeasure with me by running off and going into the boys' room to sleep, which was a great success. Saturday, we went for a hike in the morning. We had a nap and then played ball with a dog and generally just had a pretty chill day. We diffused the sharing issue by explaining to the girl that the dog has 
has feelings and wants just like any person, and that she can't control him in that way. She appeared thoughtful and then immediately started yelling at her brother for hogging the dog again, so at least she wasn't mad at the dog. I successfully heated up the casserole that the mom had left me for dinner, following her carefully laid out instructions, and I admonished the kids to not give my dog people food, and as you could probably guess, I was soundly ignored. I did draw the line at a couple of morsels from each kid, but I did have to put my foot down. Any more than that, and he's gonna have stomach issues, and honestly, nobody wants that. That night, I made sure the girl got a chance to have the dog by again hogging the couch and also closing the boy's door, since he got a turn already. The girl was incredibly smug, and the boy made me call his mom. The mom wasn't happy that my dog was in her kid's bed, but I reminded her that he doesn't shed and he doesn't smell any bad than the kids already do, and her daughter might burn the house down with us inside of it if she doesn't get a turn, so the mom accepted defeat. Saturday night was again relatively peaceful, though this time, toothbrushing absolutely did happen. Early Sunday morning, I got woken up by having my dog step on me, which is a thing that he's really good at, and he was mad at me for not leaving any room, so I just made room. Apparently, the girl tried to do something he didn't like, and he noped himself right out of there. She wasn't happy about this, but was appeased by my pain enough to go back to bed. This morning was relatively chill, some more playing with the dog and some team tug of war, and mom and dad got back around during lunchtime and thanked me for keeping their kids in one piece. The kids said bye to my dog, and there were tears, and I just loaded up my stuff and my dog, and I went back home and enjoyed the relative peace and quiet. And I wish this ended there, but you know what? There's a lot more. Maybe an hour after we got home, I get a phone call from a very frazzled sounding mother with kids crying in the background. She says that they need my dog right now. I say to myself, I'm sorry, what? You don't need a dog. You need my dog? So I don't need to come back at all and visit soon. You just want my dog. Apparently, the kids got so attached that they won't stop crying about missing the dog and the mom and her husband don't have time for two kids and a dog and that things were awful. She then tried to guilt trip me into giving them my dog, which guess what? Has absolutely zero effect on me. That is absolutely not going to happen. I still get text messages to this day about being reasonable and how I could train to have a new dog and they should just have my dog. So what you're saying is 48 hours of free babysitting wasn't enough for you? You want my dog too? Well, that's not going to happen in this lifetime or any lifetime anytime soon. How entitled and weird can you possibly get? Who in their right mind would be like, oh, thank you so much for babysitting my kids. Hey, while you're at it, can we keep your dog? Like, no, you can't keep my dog. Are you nuts? Your kids are clearly spoiled and they need some kind of discipline in their life. The fact that you're caving this easily to them freaking out is pretty obvious evidence that they are not getting good structure at home and you need to do better as a parent. So if this entitled mother really wants a dog, then it's time to get a dog of your own because asking that of your babysitter is incredibly inappropriate. My girlfriend has been treating me badly for several months because she is envious about my position in the company and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So my girlfriend and I work in the same company but in different teams. I had a high position in the company and a year ago, I was promoted to an even higher position. She was also promoted, but not to the extent that she would have liked. And since then, she started treating me badly, always annoyed with me, criticizing my work style, making jokes when I write or pronounce something wrong in English, or anything else that I do. The list of times where she mistreated me for no reason is incredibly long. The problem is, at the same time, she had recommended a former co-worker who had worked with her previously for a position in her team. Since this guy arrived, she started throwing it in my face how amazing he was was, and even said several times that he deserved to be in higher positions than me. Don't get me wrong, this guy is super competent, but I couldn't help but feeling hurt seeing my girlfriend worshipping this colleague while I'm not receiving any kind of congratulations for my promotion. Well, the comments escalated to the point where she started jokingly telling me that several times she has told me she's even dreamed of spending quality time with this guy, if you know what I mean. Now, I know we don't control dreams, but why would she tell me that? At the end of last year, I was severely depressed due to my mother's alcoholism problems. And at that time when I needed her the most, she pushed me down even further. Two things happened during that time that completely broke me. For starters, I had to do some work that she needed to review because it was a system that her team worked on. She spent the whole week saying she didn't feel like reviewing it, and when she finally did, she did it while complaining about it. However, when she needed to review the work of this co-worker, she showed me the review screen and said, we interact so well in the review system I love reviewing his work. Another instance is when we had a meeting between our teams to discuss this integration, and she was unnecessarily rude to me in front of our colleagues. Well, soon after that, 
that I had reached my limit and I said I wanted to break up. She cried a lot, assured me that she had nothing to do with this co-worker and that she didn't even like men, but believed that all of this was the result of her insecurity because she envies my position and recognition in the company. I had been asking her for months to go see a therapist to try and understand why she was so impatient with me, but she never did it. When I decided to break up, she begged me to give her another chance and even start a treatment with a therapist. I decided to give her that chance and now it's been four months, but I can't seem to get over everything that happened. She has really changed a lot and is following the therapy, but every time I see the coworker, I feel very humiliated. I can't understand why she did this to me. I always supported her in everything. I always helped her at work in everything that she asked for. I feel bad because I feel like she's really making an effort and trying to improve, but I hate jealousy games and I think all of this has left my self-esteem at an all-time low and that's making me feel awful. Is there any way to overcome this and save our relationship? I'm personally already in therapy, but I'm not able to deal with these feelings. What should I do? Honestly, I'm surprised you put up with this as much as you did. Your partner was literally throwing you under the bus simply because she was jealous about your promotion. Like, honestly, that's super toxic and I don't blame you for breaking up with her at all. Like, there's no way I would want to put up with that. You've clearly tried to communicate to her that, hey, I don't like the way I'm being treated and it's only once you retaliate and say, all right, we're done. I'm done with this. Only then does she decide, okay, I'll see a therapist. I'll do whatever you say. Like, no, it's a little too late for that personally. So if I was in your shoes and I did let this lady back in my life, I would just be very careful. She's already shown true colors. She has shown that she's an incredibly jealous person. And personally, I think you deserve a lot more than just that in a relationship. My best friend has become an absolute nightmare, but I'm afraid of cutting her off and I seriously don't know what to do. So to start off, all the names in this story have been changed. So I've been best friends with Natalie for about six years now. The relationship started off as well as any other friendship. There were a few ups and downs, but for about the first three years, nothing too serious happened. I don't know exactly why I started hating her. We had known each other for four years up to this point. She became too overbearing, too passive aggressive, made too many jokes at my expense. It doesn't help that she was extremely close with a mutual friend that bullied me relentlessly, and she was fully aware of the bullying. Whatever happened, I found myself not looking forward to seeing her. She was tiring me out. Then I made a huge mistake, and I don't think she will ever forgive me for it. I won't get into what I did exactly, because she will know that this story is about us, but rest assured, it was a mess up that I feel extremely bad about. So that's why I'm just confused. Natalie has always been the one who wants this relationship to work out. She's been the one who's urged me to text her more and hang out with her more and be more communicative, even though she still brings up all of my past mistakes. And I mean, even small ones from six years ago. She loves gloating about my mess ups while I never mention hers at all. But through the last three years, I've liked her less and less. And then everything started snowballing about a year ago. Her mental health got worse and she has become an absolute nightmare. Don't get me wrong. Mental illness does not determine a person's worth, nor does it dictate their personality. It just so happens that these two things coincide in Natalie's case. Since then, she's been treating me like garbage. At times, she is warm and funny, as she's always been in the past, but more often than not, she is cold, sharp, and cruel. She will knock down the things I say with single word responses or give me dirty looks and loves to make me feel bad about myself. There are even times where I meet her and she barely says a word to me, even when I attempt to initiate conversations. Sure, everyone has their off days, but when it feels like she doesn't care about me every time I see her, it honestly takes a toll. Also, she devalues my opinion and loves to see my facial expressions when she says something deliberately disparaging, which is all the time. She has made some really rude remarks about my own mental health, and she's also made me question my identity by repeatedly telling me I'm not really the orientation or identity that I identify with. All of this, however, Natalie just plays off as a joke. She will say things like, aw, I didn't really mean it, all the while she's just laughing at me. Plus, when I speak to her about some new friends that I made, she is very disparaging towards them. She raises her eyebrows or rolls her eyes whenever I mention them, making jokes or remarks at their expense. They, however, are extremely kind to me, and I genuinely believe they have taught me what friendship truly should be. I just can't stand it anymore. She's noticed a change in me, but since she relies on me so much, I don't have the heart to tell her what's really wrong, so I'm not sure what to make of this. I really didn't want this friendship to end, as even now, we have some great memories together. I'm also terrible at communication, which has kept me from telling her about any of my problems so far, but it's taking a negative toll on 
my mental health. Even if I did confront her about all of her problems and she vowed to change, I don't think I'm willing to make an effort with her after how she's treated me recently. The damage is already done. So should I cut Natalie off or should I try to make the relationship work? What should I do? Maybe this is as simple as just finding other friends and going to them. Show her that you know what? I don't need this kind of animosity in my life. And you don't need someone constantly criticizing you and putting you down while also claiming to be your friend in the same sentence. That's super toxic in my opinion. I would definitely not want to put up with that. So I think maybe finding new friends and just going to them more often and slowly but surely pushing her out of your life might be the best thing for you. For context, the original poster is 18 years old and so is their friend who's being awful to them. And I can tell you that you're going to be a lot better off being away from her. She sounds like a classic bully and this really does seem like a sinking ship that you really cannot save. So do yourself a favor and just find new friends. You don't need this kind of energy in your life and you don't need anybody pretending to be your friend just so they can turn around and treat you like garbage. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.